A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not fail or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his law. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread forth the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at table with him. Mary took a pound of costly ointment of pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the ointment. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, he who was to betray him, said, Why was this ointment not sold for three hundred denarii and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. And as he had the money box, he used to take what was put into it. Jesus said, Let her alone. Let her keep it for the day of my burial. The poor you always have with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only on account of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus also to death, because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. such a beautiful scene of love. You can see as the Lord is beginning this Passion Week, as He is uh, moving towards His Passion, you can tell that He would just naturally seek consolation and comfort with His friends. And so before He goes into this moment of suffering, wherein as God He knows what is about to befall Him, He goes to receive from His friends simple acts of charity and love. And so the example that we have in the gospel today is an example for us, especially during Holy Week, that in the midst of the Lord's suffering, in the midst of his rejection, in the midst of him being rejected from human hearts, we seek to be like this little family of Bethany and be a consolation for Christ in his sufferings. Come to him and do what we can, simple acts of charity. It simply says, Martha served, that's it. And we can see this beautiful transformation that has happened in Martha through the gospel, which is that before she used to serve with much distraction, but you can see that her whole soul has been brought to a beautiful peace and recollection, and now she serves in this disposition of recollection, the one whom she loves, and Lazarus in his gratitude to the Lord, the one who has been raised back to life, the one who represents all of us, all of us who through the passion, death, and resurrection of Christ are truly raised to life. We are the friends of Jesus whom he has raised from death. And so also, like Lazarus, we simply enjoy the company of the one who has redeemed us, saved us, and brought us back to life. But then we have this very profound act of love that Mary gives to the Lord. It is very truly a representative act of what it is to come before the Lord in adoration and to anoint him with love, with attention, with focus, with praise. And so Mary, it says, took a pound of costly ointment. So it tells us not only what she brings, which is something very precious and beautiful, but tells us that she brought a lot of it. (laughs) She brought a pound of it. And so also in our prayer, when we come before the Lord, it's not only just what we bring, which is the prayer which is pleasing to him, but we should bring a certain intensity, a, a lot of it, if you will, to the feet of Jesus, especially in this week. This week is a week of prayer. It is a week where we should bring a lot of ourselves before the Lord. Give him something that is costly. And so it tells us not only the amount, the quantity, it tells us also its value, it is costly. And it tells us also of its quality, which is that it is pure. These are all things which should be able to be said about our own prayer towards Jesus Christ, that it is costly, that it is great, that it is pure, it comes from a pure heart. All of these adjectives should describe our act of prayer to the Lord. What's very interesting, I was reading recently in terms of the history of what spikenard is, 
this, this smell, this aroma that is added to this ointment so that it might be a, a beautiful fragrance. Spikenard was something that used to be taken and still it would grow only in the upper regions of the Himalayas. And so it was very difficult for them to obtain spikenard. But there's a profound rabbinic tradi tradition amongst the Jewish people where they say that spikenard was the only thing that Adam and Eve were allowed to take from paradise when they were rejected and cast out. And so spikenard for the Jewish people had a great depth of meaning to it. It was, in a certain sense, a remembrance of paradise lost. It was a call to the Jewish people, that fragrance of what had been lost through sin. But just as it also was a symbol, if you will, of what was lost and what was sorrowful then, when it is applied to the feet of Christ, it becomes in Mary's prayer a great sign of hope, the one who can restore us to paradise, the one who can restore us to this beautiful garden of our existence with God. And so as Mary takes this ointment of pure spike nard, a same nard that is mentioned in the Song of Songs in chapter 1 that has a pleasing fragrance that is for the king himself. She takes this ointment and she pours it onto the feet of Jesus. And it says the whole house was filled with its fragrance. The whole house is filled with this hope of paradise, if you will. This smell which reminds them, yes, and it is filled with contrition for sin, but also confidence and hope now in the one who will deliver us from sin. And so her act of anointing Christ takes on this whole now another beautiful layer of meaning as she comes to him not only with an intensity of prayer as an example for us, but also the content of our prayer. That when we, when we come before the Lord, especially in times of adoration and here at the Mass where we actually participate in His passion and His death and in His resurrection, so also we bring, if you will, that spike nod from our own hearts, a contrition for sin, a contrition not only for sin in general, the sin of the original sin which lost us paradise, but our own personal actual sins. And so we come before him in this Holy Week with contrition for our sins which have caused his passion and death. And in our contrition, we then apply that to Jesus, if you will. Anoint his feet with our contrition. Anoint his feet with our tears of repentance. But then also, it is not simply sorrow that we come before the Lord with, but also hope. Holy Week is both filled with sorrow and hope. We look forward to the passion of Christ in a mysterious way. We look forward to his suffering and death in a mysterious way. Because in his passion, death, and resurrection is our salvation. And so our prayer is filled with contrition, but it is also mingled with that aroma of hope as we apply it to the feet of the one who can save us. Amen.